In this video, we're going to go through five things that everybody should know about Death Prophet. Now, this is going to benefit you whether you play the hero or whether you don't, because you'll either learn how to be better with the hero or you'll learn how to deal with the hero because you know what their tricks are. So I hope you find this video useful and let's get started. Starting off with a few laning tips. Now, of course, when in lane, you want to be using your first ability, the Q, to be able to secure creeps. But you also want to do your best to make sure to harass heroes with this at the same time. So always position yourself in a place where you can get the last hit, but also fire out the nuke to hit the enemy hero too. It has good range, so it's pretty easy to do. A lot of heroes may move out of the way to make sure you can't do this, but that's actually good because a lot of the time they make it easy for you to deny creeps and you should focus on doing that if they do give you the space or they just stay too far away to even get experience. Personally, I almost always max out my Q in lane with Death Prophet because it lets you farm faster and it also gives you a great way to push the enemy out of lane. However, it is also worth noting that your Spirit Siphon makes it super easy for you to trade with heroes in lane even if you haven't maxed it because you'll be able to deal damage and heal yourself at the same time while harassing them with auto attacks or your Q. Death Prophet absolutely stomps lane in most situations and is even one of the only heroes that stands up to Viper pretty well and in fact can out lane Viper if played correctly. And of course, if you do feel like the enemy is low enough because they've taken a few Crypt Swarms to the face, you can usually dive them pretty easily with a couple of levels of Spirit Siphon as well because it just heals you up so much that it's not that big of a deal. Number two, Death Prophet has a hell of a high mana use in the early game all game really but early on you're going to be using mana like crazy using it to get last hits and lane using it to harass the enemy and your mana costs are pretty high so getting things like a null talisman which gives you extra mana regen a bottle of course to get as many runes as possible and you do compete for runes pretty well considering again you can trade with many people very easily and also getting a infused raindrops can definitely be worth it for the extra mana regen too Whenever I start a game with Death Prophet, I usually include a infused raindrops in my actual list of quick buy items because I always plan on getting one anyway, even if I'm not laning against somebody that does well at removing this. It has a few different uses. Of course, it gives you the mana regen. That's the main reason, but it also is going to let you tower dive later on if you start diving people with your spirit siphon when you're ganking, all these sorts of things. But your mana use is super high on Death Prophet, so I would suggest making sure you're ferrying out clarities, you're bringing out mangoes if you need them, you have a old talisman for the extra mana regen and you're also making use of a bottle one trick you can do in a team fight is you can actually spirit siphon and then use a yule scepter and continue to heal from the spirit siphon this will not cancel the ability it will continue to channel and you will still receive the healing so if you're getting ganked by say like three people or in a team fight they're focusing you which is going to tend to happen especially if your ultimate is on they're going to want to clear you off first when they go on you spam all of the spirit siphons you can on as many targets as you can and then use the yule scepter on yourself that way when you go up into the yule scepter you will receive all of the healing that you can without taking any more damage and come back down with probably full health in a lot of situations this can turn a fight super fast as they commit a lot of stuff to bringing down your health then you just fully heal it back and they can't finish you off and your team can turn do as much damage as they can and you're good to continue on fighting this can save your life in tons of situations and it can also win you fights as well so keep this in your back pocket just in case it comes in handy and just surprise the enemy with it because they will commit a lot of stuff to you and if you don't die from it and you do manage to fully heal up then they got a big problem on their hands very quick reminder to remind you guys to click that subscribe button to help grow the channel it is a pretty new channel and i am making as much content as i possibly can in the time i can commit to it but of course the more people that subscribe to the channel then the more time i can commit to actually putting more content up for you guys as well i would appreciate it it helps out a ton let's get back to the video another big thing worth noting on death prophet is she ends up being one of the fastest heroes in the game because your ultimate gives you a passive movement bonus even when it's not activated so when you level up the ultimate you will receive a passive movement bonus of a level one you'll get 12 percent then 16 percent and then 20 percent every time you level it up when you activate the ultimate you also gain an extra eight percent 12 percent and 16 percent movement bonus on top of that so if you add things like a wind lace even you are going to be one of the fastest heroes in the game and you become super difficult for the enemy to chase down you can get out of sticky situations you can chase people so that they can't get away from you and i absolutely love getting travels on this hero instead of anything else i will usually build into a bottle a null talisman and then immediately get travels 
Getting boosted travel so early on gives you insane movement speed, allows you to be around the map on allies lanes, helping push towers and stuff as well, and responding to other people and ganking because you're such a strong early game hero. But it also makes you, with a win lace, one of the fastest heroes immediately. People can't chase you, you can chase them, and you become an absolute pain in the ass for the enemy very, very early. So take advantage of your movement speed and think about it when you're making plays, whether you need to chase someone down quickly. This can absolutely be one of your strong points and you want to be using it. One extra little bonus tip with this one actually is that when you've used your ultimate and it has expired, the ghosts are going to return to you. Until all of the ghosts have actually returned to you, your movement speed boost will not end. So if you plan on keeping that movement speed for any reason whatsoever, as long as you're running away from the direction of the ghosts, they won't actually reach you in time and you can keep taking advantage of that bonus movement speed. They'll no longer deal any damage to any of the heroes, but the ultimate effect will not end until all those ghosts have returned to your hero. So you'll get bonus movement speed. You can use this to run back to base if you need to and then teleport back out or whatever use you may want the movement speed for. One thing I've noticed and I tend not to do when taking fights is a lot of people will push a tower and use their ultimate immediately to start pushing the tower faster. They'll commit to, hey, we're going to go bottom and use my ult to take this tower and they will turn up and use it straight away. This isn't something I tend to like to do, especially if I think the enemy might try to engage us in a fight. The reason being is I like to hold my ultimate and just hit the tower with my team until the enemy engage on us. This way, as soon as the fight breaks out or when I think the fight's about to break out, I can throw my ultimate then and go ahead and take the fight with this. If you use it straight away, the enemy are likely going to wait around until it's been used for the majority of the time or until it's about to expire and then initiate on you because you are a lot weaker now. They're not scared of your ultimate anymore and so they can chase you down. A lot of the time, this might depend on whether you are doing really well in a game or whether you're feeling like you're a little bit behind. If you're behind, you may want to use the ultimate, get the tower and then get out. This is absolutely something you may consider. But if you're ahead and you feel like you can just absolutely stomp a team fight and you want to fight them because you'll get more out of it if they do try, then hold your ultimate, wait for them to engage on you and defend their tower or until you get a good opportunity to actually chase them down and kill them and then use your ultimate. This way you can either take the tower and not use your ult because they didn't even try to defend and you go to a different tower and use it there or you end up getting a good team fight and taking a ton of their heroes out and getting more gold for your team. So consider which is going to be best for your situation in game and maybe don't always just use it straight away. Just weigh up, should I use it now and then get out? Or should we hold it, just push the tower anyway and then take a fight with it? Finally, your ultimate hits with physical damage. However, it will still always gain lifesteal effect from spell lifesteal. It also increases its damage from spell amp as well. So neutral items such as timeless relic or vampire fangs or anything like this can be super useful depending on your time in the game. You can see here in this last example that the death prophet on the left actually has spell amp and spell lifesteal and you can see on the right hand side the death prophet just has nothing at all in the inventory and it's just using their ultimate. Using both the ultimates at the exact same time you can see that the target dummy on the left hand side is taking much more damage and the death prophet is getting a heal effect while the one on the right hand side is quite a bit behind and so you should keep in mind the actual value of having new neutral items that do give you spell lifesteal or spell amplification as well. These affect your ultimate in such a big way, it's a hell of a big difference and honestly you will notice it a lot. Having spell lifesteal while exorcism is on makes you so much harder to, to actually kill as well as increasing the healing that you get from the spirit siphon too. You'll find yourself being pretty damn difficult to kill while dealing a hell of a lot more damage. And there's six of the top tips that you should know about Death Prophet, whether you play Death Prophet or whether you are against them. Knowing this information should help you out in a few different situations. If you enjoyed this video, guys, I would very much appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. Also, leave a like as well and a comment down below on which hero you would like to see me do this for next. But of course, this channel is pretty new. So every single new subscriber to the channel makes a massive difference and also lets me commit more time to making more content for you guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.